everybody welcome this is crafty life mom I know I have not been live in a long time especially on Facebook but I figured it was time to kind of get back into going live and doing some crafts with you guys I have a crazy amount of reasons as to why because life is busy but um I also have been going over on YouTube and doing a little bit of live there. So if you've been missing me on Facebook, it's because I've been over there a little bit um, with some other videos. So make sure you check out YouTube Crafty Life Mom over there and you'll be able to see some of the crafts that I've been up to. I also am over on Instagram and I tend to post things there. I try to share every craft I do on every platform, but um, sometimes it's just hard to do or you know it's just one of those things that doesn't get shared everywhere so i try my best to do that so i thought um easter is a week away less than a week away and i thought it would be fun to make a little easter gnome um, i have a couple of friends that i see and they've been asking me to go live and do these gnomes so i thought it would be fun to make two today i'm gonna make them fairly similar um, because I am going to give one away. So I just thought it would be fun to share my process with you guys. Again, I've made gnomes before um, and I don't think I've done an Easter gnome yet. So I'm going to do um, something a little different and some stuff similar to some of the gnomes I've made before. So if you've caught those lives before, then you kind of have an idea as to how I'm going to do it again today. Um, these gnomes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them um, like a little bit of a stand or a prop. And I think I did that last time with the Christmas gnome. We actually used boots. And I don't know if you guys remember, but these, um, these are ornaments. They're actually little boot like ornaments. They came from the um, Big Lots ornament section at Christmas time. I kind of stocked up on these because I had a feeling I was going to make gnomes with the boots, right? And I thought I was gonna make a lot of Christmas ones, I'll be honest with you, I just didn't. I made like three or four and gave those out um, as gifts and that was that. I didn't even keep one for myself. So <laughs> um, I'm going to show you guys, let me open this up just so you can kind of see um, how they work or how they are. They're like just a little, one little boot buffalo check with a little bit of greenery there. And I like these. I like these at Christmas time. Um, but they could be so much better, right? So I actually took um, these apart. And because we don't need it for Christmas. This is Easter, right? So we don't need a Christmas look. And I just started kind of like ripping the, the stuff off of these, these boots. Like there's this little fur cuff on here that they have added, which is super cute. We could actually re-add it back to the boot that, you know, once we're done, like recovering it with an Easter print, um, if we wanted to. But I wanted just to kind of show you guys, so if you have any of these and you know, like you're not gonna need all the ornaments from them or you have, you know, you know you have these and you'd rather make a gnome, then that's why I'm showing you. So when you take these apart, they kind of, they're like hot glued to death but it's not too terrible to take them apart um, and just kind of peel away the embellishments and everything you can kind of see and let me get in there with some scissors on this one because I'm not going to take this off completely but you can kind of see it's just like a plastic I don't know like a plastic molding or a plastic casing and I can't get it all the way off of you. Um, this one's kind of tough. Tougher than the other one, so I'm just ripping it. But anyway, it's a plastic like mold in the shape of a boot. So I don't know if you could go like, you know where they sell like dollhouse parts and buy like some boots or shoes if you don't have these ornaments. Um, I want you to see the shape so that you can kind of look for an object that would mimic the boot. Um, because once you get it to this shape, oh, there we go. And we don't need that either. That's all you really need, right? So it's kind of like this plastic and it's hollow. 
has the top on this one and like I can kind of oh I just cracked it you see it's like it's not like that awesome and even though it's like cracked I could totally reuse this and cover it so it's not a big deal we just need this shape right so what I did was I went to the dollars um, no went to Walmart you guys know that they have like all of the different um, fabrics are like a dollar forty nine hey Gwen hey Mary hey Patty hey Marcia how are you guys doing thanks for watching um, so yeah, I just picked up a bunch of these little bitty, um, what are these fat quarters or like a dollar fifty for these, um, different Easter fabrics. And then right around that same section in the Easter section, I don't know if, um, they still have them out because I did buy them a couple weeks ago. So you may or may not be able to find them, but also at Walmart for $3, I found these basket accessories right here and it's got the unicorn little head thing on it you see that immediately when I saw this I was like gnome straight gnome this would be the cutest thing on a gnome especially the sock gnomes that we make all the time on here we make one we've almost made one for every season so um yes this thing is super adorable it has like the ribbons on it it has this now the unicorn thing like if, you, if you're into unicorns or you have someone who's like a fan of unicorns, I would definitely keep the cute little golden little unicorn thing, but I'm thinking about cutting it off, right? Just so I have that part of it. I think that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna use this um, on our gnome today as part of like the top with the hat. So this was from Walmart and then you just need something like a boot shape and you're gonna cover the boot shape, right? And I've seen where, um, there is a uh, another YouTuber, she makes gnomes all the time, um, and she has patterns to make boots. I believe her name is Ruffles in Rain Boots. Um, she uses or makes boots with pill bottles, like a medicine pill bottle, and then somehow creates the toe. I'm not sure, but that's about the size of this if you're interested in the boot part and you don't have like the ornaments that you can kind of like dis disassemble and create your own boot. So let me show you, I had two of these that I took, okay? And before I went live, cause I didn't want to like waste too much of your time. I um, pre-covered them with the fabric using the Walmart fabric. Look how cute. Isn't that adorable? These are so cute. And like, they are not super duper like covered correctly. Like this one actually came out a little bit better than this one. Like you can kind of see right there, my little toe um, on it. It's, it's kind of wrapped and covered over. And then you see how like I glued the edges. I probably should have glued this up first and then wrapped the fabric just to kind of give you a little tip um, if you go to do this. And so it's just the way it turned out. I think it's good enough the way that it is. I'm not super picky. It's not like I'm going to sell the gnome in a store or anything or like at a craft show. So if you guys are making these and like selling them, I would definitely get a little bit better on how you cover the boot or how you make it a little more smooth. Um, so yeah, here's the two boots. Now I wanna show you really quick another set of boots that I have that are from, sorry, let me get that out of the way, that were also an ornament at Christmas time. Let me put this in the camera right. Um, they're these furry ones. They're kind of like a tiger looking. And they have this like, I don't know, thick little thing down here. And um, if this one's missing its bell, but you know, it's, it's okay. So these are another boot. And these actually don't have a, um, a flat top on them. But I thought these would be super adorable for the base of a gnome as well. So I'm gonna try and make two today. We're gonna at least make one live and then give one away. Um, for the sock gnome and then for our beards as you guys know they all have beards my favorite place to buy fur is joanne fabrics um the craft store i love them um when it comes to the fur because it's just a few dollars and you get enough in this little this is this by park lane um that's the name brand you know you get enough to wear depending on how much of a beard you have you get, you know, you could get four out of it or you could get like at least two. 
So um, I just think it's a good, it's about eight and a half by 11, like sheet of paper size of fur for just a few dollars. And so they have all of these pretty colors um, when it comes to gnomes. So I think because it's Easter, we're gonna go with pink today. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is, I always use socks. I buy the socks for the gnomes from the Dollar Tree and I always do a gray color. Um, or at least that's what I've been leaning towards doing. The gray color is very universal. It's a neutral color. I like it better than the white because it doesn't get dirty. And these are just the Dollar Tree cheapo, um, like diabetic socks. Um, and they honestly, they don't have any compression in them, so I wouldn't even call them that. But they're just a basic sock, okay? And I stuff the socks with the polyfill, which you can actually get on Amazon or any major, major craft store. And I just pull out like bunches of it, hand globs of it, and I stuff my sock. Now this is a darker gray one I have. I stuff my sock with it. You can put a little bit of um, beans or I wouldn't put sand unless you put it in a plastic bag. You can put that down in to the bottom toe part of your sock to kind of give it something to kind of like shape and stand it up on, especially if you're not putting it on the boots because the boots are going to act as a stand and kind of raise the gnome up. And then the beard kind of hangs so long that it covers the, the gnome. Um, if you guys kind of get my drift there. So what I do is I just, you know, this is probably two handfuls right here, and that's probably my handfuls right there. You can see kind of that that's, you know, about half of what I need. So we're gonna stuff it a little bit more. And I always say when it comes to the stuffing, the more stuffing, I feel like the better. And the reason that is is because it's more solid. It's more like thick. You don't want it too limpy or like an, you know, like a pillow that loses its stuffing. You don't want your gnome to lose its stuffing, okay? So, make sure you put a lot in there and then, oops, get it down in there and then start shaping it into your body, right? Once you start getting it shaped into like this roly-poly kind of log, I like it to kind of be more than my hand to like holding it, you know? So I try to keep that uh, thickness, I guess I would say, of the gnome. And you, can, you guys saw how much I put out. This is all still one same gnome that I have here. Let's see, let me see. You guys tell me where you're from. Let's see, I see, hey Janine, Gwen's back, Gwen Smith. Hello, Mariella, April, hello. Thanks for watching, guys. Haven't been live in a while, so I appreciate you coming on. All right, so I'm gonna use up all that batting I pulled out just for this one gnome. And I'm going to stuff, 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 stuff it down in there. And you can kind of see how it makes this little Bloop, bloop, we don't want that. You kind of, this is where the heel is of the sock. So we're really gonna push it down into that foot part of it, okay? And that's what's gonna help keep our, kind of our shape here. We want it to be as much down in that section as possible. And then I kind of just bang it around and kind of get it shape there and that's probably like the hardest part of it just kind of getting the shape once you do like several of these you know and i mean like if you want to do a gnome where you don't have the boots and it stand then i definitely might recommend like putting some kind of you know you could put a couple glass marbles down in there some pebbles like from the floral section something like that to kind of give it a base to stand right so I kind of like mine like a little fat. I don't like them super skinny, right? All right, so where are you from? New York. Wow, Minnesota, wow. Never been to Minnesota. But is it cold there still? Um, I can imagine, I'm in Florida, it's hot. It is like summer heat already. We're in, we had 85 degrees, I think, like over the weekend. We're supposed to get to 65. I think in a couple days, I think I saw that somewhere in the forecast. 
I don't know, but I, I'm, I'll be glad for that because it's hot around here. Um, hey, Patty, how are you? All right, so what I did was I just got it all down in there, okay? And I just tied the top in a knot like that. And I'm just gonna take my scissors. And you guys know the drill when you're making a gnome, just cut it off. And you see kind of how it's standing, it's ready to go on its own. I'm gonna move this out here just to the side for a minute. I'm gonna come back to my boots. So, my boots. My boots with the fur, you know what? I have that song in my head. Okay, um, you kind of see how this is gonna work. We wanna make sure like the, the top of it, when I go to glue this on, I'm gonna glue it in a like kind of downward motion so it kind of has like the muffin, you guys know what I mean, right? Over the boot, because it kind of helps it have that shape like of the body, right? So I just kind of want to give you an idea like how we're shaping up here. Now I'm putting the gnome body to the side and what I'm gonna do is take my two boots, I'm gonna put some hot glue on these and kind of just press them together like this and make sure that they're level this way. And then I have some twine right here. I'm gonna kind of, I don't know if I wanna tie them together per se, but I do have a little slip right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put some twine on one side of the boot here just to kind of give it you know, like some laces kind of look, like it's got tied up shoe. Um, I'm doing one side first, and then I'll go and do the other side. And I think that's just gonna help maybe disguise the fact that I didn't cover the toe with the fabric too, too well. Do you guys know what I mean? I think it's just gonna help it just a little bit. I'm not sure, we'll see here what, what happens. Um, but just something to kind of help this get a little better here. Um, here we go. Double knot, right? Just like you do your shoes. And then I'm gonna cut that off. So look, I'll show you, I'll stop it right there. See how I just did the one little side of the boot? I'm gonna do the same on the other side. And then what I'm gonna do is do a third one, just kind of securely tying them together. But because I have these two little bows going on, you're not really hopefully gonna be able to tell that, hey, look, I did, you know, two different strings there. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense to you guys. Just to kind of help secure these um, boots together. I want them to stay together and kind of act as one now, so. Let me tie up my little laces here. And I just love jute twine for like mostly everything. It just kind of goes good. It brings the, nat like especially if you decorate with a natural element or even the farmhouse vibe, which I know some people are getting more into a modern vibe, like a modern farmhouse and they're getting a little bit away from the rustic look or not as rustic, I should say, like some stuff's not rustic. Um, I definitely like still using the twine because it brings in those natural elements even when you're adding color with your seasonal decor, especially like Easter. It's all the bright colors. Like I don't really know anybody that decorates with just that. Okay, so for the one string that's gonna go like for both of them, all I'm doing is I'm just gonna run it through and tie it off in the back. Like I don't want it to be obvious. So I don't want this bow, or a knot, I should say, to be where it can be seen. So I'm just tying it off together and I'm pulling it out with the loops like this. And then I'm just gonna cut this off so you don't even see it. So now they are actually tied together and um, ready to go. Super cute, right? I got a little string hanging down here. We might add some little bobble dobbles to it. Okay, next part is we have to do the beard and we have to do the hat, right? And the nose and the nose and the hat and the fur, the beard, all kind of work together there 
in a unison, right? So you kind of have to be aware of those three things when you're making your gnome. Um, and what I like to do is kind of just measure on my gnome how far his beard needs to go. And I kind of just eyeball it with my finger and then I cut about an inch below where I want to be. Cut off my excess there. And they you cut this fabric from behind because you want the um you want the fur to have that long shag look, right? So you try not to cut the actual fur. You try and cut just the back part. I've said it before, it's kind of hard to do. There is some tricks to it, but honestly, like I am not the best person to tell you how to cut the fur. I just know that when I do this, I try to cut this little lippy part of the fabric off. I try to cut it away from the fur. And I try to also cut like the corners off and allow just this fur to kind of be long, shaggy kind of. I hope that makes sense. I'm not sure I'm explaining it really correct. But you can kind of see here on the back side, it's more of like this weird U shape. And then when I turn around, the fur is actually longer. And then you kind of have the ability to, to shape it. So here I'm going to go ahead and try and cut a little bit more and almost to a V shape. That will help. Let's see if I can get that happening. Here we go and like I start kind of playing with my my beard see that all right now you have the choice when you go to put your nose and I like to use a wooden nose some people take the sock and they pull it forward and kind of like tie it off like and then like paint the nose pink I like to use a true wooden nose so when it comes to your nose right we're gonna stick it here you can do it two ways you can put the beard up and around it like this you can put the beard on first pull this fur up and out of the way kind of find your spot put your nose there and then when you put your hat on you bring the hat down over and I know I'm hugging it but you put your hat down like over like that that is my preferred way to do it um, like I said you can totally do it so many different ways but that is the way I'm going to do the gnome today. So, before we get to that part though, we've got our body, we've got the beard, we've got the nose, we've got to come up with our hat. So, there's a couple of things we can do. I know we're going to be putting this little guy on. We can match the hat to the boots and kind of make it like a cute little outfit for the guy. Um, or I have like felt, let me just kind of show you. I have my felt here. Felt is a little bit easier to make the cone hat um, because it just is. You just kind of fold it and then you cut it to the angle and you have it kind of like that. Um, I kind of like to see like how it's gonna look. You guys tell me, do you think we should do this polka dot felt that I have, which I think they also have this at Joann's if you wanna get the same, or should we do the fabric? Um, I'm kind of just looking at that with this or the fabric. I kind of like maybe both fabric. What do you guys think? Leave me a comment really quick and tell me which one do you think we should do? The um, fabric matching boots hat or maybe the polka dot felt. The felt's a little sturdier and easier to work with. Let's see. April says the felt. Um... I also have plain felt over here. Let me guys show you really quick. Um, like this plain color. 
um, since this guy is like a little elaborate, which these do look good with the boots. You know, it's not too overpowering. Let's see, I've got another felt and another fabric. Okay, we will try to go with the felt, um, the polka dotted felt. And if it works out, it works out, right? Fabric to me, just so you guys know, is a little bit harder to make a hat fit to the size. You just have to be careful. Um, someone said, yes, the plain felt. I do like the plain felt. Maybe we'll do that with the other one and I can kind of show you both. When it comes to making the hat with, let me take this sticker off, um, the felt. It's, you know, you gotta, you have to measure how, whatever around it is, right? How many inches around? So, and then you kind of have to cut it into the cone. So I like to have the hat tip back, right? And then come down just over my nose. So I can't go down too, too far because my beard's gonna be there. I can't go down too, too far, but I go down, let's see you guys, this is the top right here. So you see it's like two or three inches I've gone down, okay? And then for your cone to happen, I'm gonna keep this straight and then to make the cone, I'm gonna cut at a diagonal and then what we do is we'll put this into a little like puff and we'll glue and tuck it, glue and tuck it. So that's what I'm gonna do, okay? So I like to use the felt this way. I think it's a perfect size, especially for the sock gnomes. Hey Michelle, how are you? And then work it where work it to where once I glue that, right? I gotta see how far I gotta cut to make my cone. So, okay, I'm gonna take it off. I've kinda eyeballed it. I eyeball everything. It's just easier that way. And I'm gonna start, okay, so look, I folded it. Let me show you, I, don't, I wanna show you. So I folded it, not this way, right? I folded it this way in half. Easiest way that I know how to make the hat. Okay, so I've got it folded in half. This is the fold side, this is the two sides. That's what we're gonna cut. We're gonna go up halfway and I'm gonna cut almost to the edge. I'm gonna leave a little bit like of an inch here, okay? And that's what I'm gonna do just to get my cone shape. The reason I don't do the full diagonal and I kinda don't do a straight either. I kinda curve a little as I go. I'm gonna show you why. I don't cut all the way from the bottom because I feel like I need that whole circumference for my gnome. Now this might be a little tight when we go to do it, but I just, I kind of like it that way better. Now, I've seen it done this way. I haven't tried it this way, so maybe we'll try it tonight just to show you. Let's see, hey, hey Michelle, did I make my shirt? Yes, I made my shirt, hippity hoppity. Um, I think I used to have this in the shop where you could order one. I have to go back and look because I took a bunch of those shirts down. Um, but yes, it was a cute little file that I had and I did make my shirt with some HTV. Okay, so back to our hat. I'm gonna reverse it and then we're gonna flip it inside out just like you do sewing, right? Um, and that way you kind of create a really nice seam and I'm gonna do a teeny tiny bead of hot glue, which with this glue gun, it's really hard to do a tiny bead, so I'm gonna do my best. But just a tiny little thin little line flattened out little line, right? I want it flat, which what I mean by when I make it flat is I put the nozzle through the glue so it um, doesn't like have a, it's not rounded, it's like smoothed out. I don't know if that makes sense, but anyway, that's what we're doing, okay? Now if I need to, as I'm putting the hat on and gluing and tucking, I can do that too. All right, so here it is, it's glued. I have my little hole there at the top. We're gonna fix that. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this inside out. Let's see if I can, let me give it a second to just kind of dry and secure. It is felt, so, um, you know, it's nice. It's a soft felt too, and it's kind of stiff, but it's not like the hardest felt I've worked with. It's a really nice one though. I like the pattern on this felt. Um, so, and you can kind of see like, where at the top here, I'm starting to turn it inside out. It's some of the glue is like kind of pulling apart from its other side, which is totally fine. I'm just gonna put a little bit 
right there and then just pinch it back together again, right? But the reason I like that is because it kind of, and I'm going to use my scrap to kind of wipe the excess here, is because it, um, it just gives it a little bit cleaner of a look. Now, you see the top of my hole? I can put a little glue and then like smash it and then smash it until I get like this little crinkled, almost crinkled little point. You see how I did that? So, and then if you have like a pom-pom, which I think I have some in my little stash, you could totally do a pom-pom on the top here to kind of cover the fact that this is what you end up with on the top of your felt hat, right? It's kind of like not really a nice finish. It doesn't, it doesn't want to stay completely shut. Um, so that's where I like to do what I call like the cover and just uh, pinch it and kind of put like a pom-pom or something there. No worries, Michelle, you're totally fine. I, I'm, I'm happy if, uh, to answer your questions if you guys have any questions. So how do you get one? You are doing Easter egg hunt. Oh Lord, and it's in a week. We'll have to talk after this. We'll see what we can come up with. I might know where to tell you to get the file. I might, I don't know if I made this one or if it's one I purchased, um, the SVG file. Do you have a Cricut or a Silhouette, Michelle? Um, Cause I might be able to help you with that there. I know I have some free files. If you guys are new to Crack Life Mom, on the website, there's a link at the top that says resource library. If you click on the resource library, if you're a member, which it's free to be a member, you basically put in your email address and you'll get my newsletter, um, which I try to send out weekly, but I don't. So you, I don't bombard you, I don't sell my list. Um, I have over like 10,000 ladies on that list. And when I send, when I create a free SVG cut file, when I give one away free, um, I email it to you and I tell you, hey, there's some new files in the library. So you can go and download them however many times you want to. There's no limit. Um, you're not allowed to sell the files, but you can use them in any way you want. You have a commercial license. If you want to create shirts and then sell them, you can, or decals and sell them, or tote bags, whatever it is. Um, I have that limited commercial license with those free files. So they're there for you. Cause I like crafting just as much as the next guy. Now, if it's somebody else's file, I will totally tell you that or share with you where I got it from. Um, so you can purchase it and each maker, like each person that makes files, just so you guys know, if you're new to Cricut or Silhouette, you have to find out what the permissions are. Um, I just made it easy. Cause I'm like, if you're gonna, if it's for free, it's for free, right? You're gonna make what you wanna make, so. All right, back to our little Nomi guy. You kind of see like I've been pinching it while I was talking there, and it's almost to a point, and then you see the steam, right? So now I've got like my little Nomi hat. Okay, so it's gonna fit on there like that. And you kind of see how he pokes out back here? I kind of will push that in, and then sometimes I'll flip it down to kind of like have the side. We'll see how it works with the ears. I'm not gonna flip it just yet because I want it to be you know, where it's gonna be. All right, so, um, let's see, I'm gonna try and find my front here. And kind of look at my fur, da -da -da -da, and pull up, I'm gonna pull up, like I said, my beard, right? Away from where I'm going to put that nose. And this kind of just shows you like that, so it's about an inch down because I want my hat to come down to that part, okay? So, I've kind of pre-done that and then what I'm going to do is just put some glue in this area here. And I don't, I'll show you really quick. I don't put the glue like all the way down. I don't wanna, I want some of it to kind of flap, right? I know that makes no sense. But you'll see what I mean here in just a minute. All right, so I'm pushing it down and this is what I mean by the flap. Bloop, bloop, right? I kind of want that looseiness because I, I may trim the length here. Once I get it on my boots, let me show you. See, it's almost a little too long for the boots. So I definitely will probably be trimming it. That's why I didn't want to glue this solidly all the way down. Um, but I'm going to do my nose next and then I'll trim it and that'll give my nose 
a little time to dry in its spot. And I like push this down real hard into it. And then I start bringing my fur kind of like back down over my little guy like that. And it doesn't hurt to put like a little smidge of glue into the fur to kind of like smash it down to the nose a little bit. It just kind of helps. I don't know. You can do what you want. Careful, don't burn yourself. I've burnt myself so many times today. I have some crafts that I made earlier for YouTube and I will show you guys what I made. Cause it's gonna look super cute next to my little Nomi guy. All right, so let me just tap down my edges here. Tap it down, I guess. All right, so shaping up. Mm -hmm. What do you think? All right, so now let's do a little beard trim. To do this, I just go up underneath and just trim about a half an inch down this side, like so, and another half an inch on this side, like so. And then, and I remember I'm cutting from the back, okay? Cutting from the back. And then I'm gonna give it like that shag haircut by pulling that fur out. You see, like I just pulled out some globs and it's flying around everywhere right here. I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera, but I'm about to start sneezing with all this little fur. And then, you know, you, you know, I don't know, I'm not a hairdresser, but you can start shaping them up, you know, like how they, you know, um, what you wanna do, right? Let's see, I'm gonna trim this because it's a little off center you can kind of give him his little bearded trim maybe do it like this i don't know you know it's, it's whatever you want it to be right all right so now when he sits up on his boots he's got a little more lift happening Woo! okay we're gonna do the boot part last but let's go to the hat okay moving right along now we've got the back here we've got our back here we're gonna put this on where we want it and so to do this always do the front first and then work your way gluing it down in the back okay let's see separate his little nose hairs okay so I've kind of got it where I want it for the nose part. So what I do is I just kind of lift it up, get my glue ready to get in there. Cause you, I feel like you only kind of have one shot at this before it just is like, it's where it's at, right? It's where it's gonna be. So shoot that glue and then press it and hold it kind of into place like that okay super good all right so now from here i'm going to glue like the sideburns where that would kind of be into place now if you're going to add arms you um probably would want to make sure you don't tack it down 100 percent so that you can get the arm in there you guys think i should add arms to this guy let me know. You guys want to see one with arms? I know some of you like the arms. We can do arms if you want to see arms. I can grab um, arms. Just put it in the comments. Say arms with no, or gnome, gnome arms. Let me go and I'll grab the materials. We'll do it with some arms. Okay. So he's looking. So look, you could totally leave it like this and be totally done. This would be cute. A sock, fur, nose, and the felt hat. And like the felt, you could, I don't know if you can find felt at Dollar Tree. I haven't seen it at Dollar Tree. But I mean, the felt is like, maybe the patterned ones are a few dollars or not even a few dollars. Like maybe all together, this is a few dollars because you'd have to buy the fur. You have less than five, six bucks in this. No, and I've seen them sell for 45 and up. And you guys probably think that I'm making that up, but I am not. Um, those gnomes go pretty high, especially some of your higher quality 
handmade ones. Um, big time. Okay, arms. Let me talk arms because I didn't pull out the materials for arms, so sorry I had to get off camera for that. Okay, pie cleaners. I always have a stash. These you can get at the Dollar Tree. No, color doesn't matter because um, you're going to wrap them in fabric. You can go to Hobby Lobby, I think, or wait, wait Amazon. I don't know. Pump. Oh, let me get it. These little palms, do you see them? They're super tiny. These are the hands. Now, if you're gonna do arms on your gnome, let me put this up right here, sorry. If you're gonna do arms, you wanna um, wrap them in fabric and you wanna put the little, whoop, you wanna put the little hands. So, let me show you. We'll use the same fabric as the boots. And this is just one fat quarter. This is what's left of what I had from that one fat quarter. Or, and we're gonna have tons of it left, okay? Um, so this is what you do. Fabric on the end, let me do this side because that's the raw edge. Fabric on the end, line of glue. This is the way I do it. You can do it any other way you want. Girl, how do I get one? Oh, I already read that. Okay, I was just making sure I got everything. Lay your pipe cleaner down in the glue. It's okay if it's all wiggly. Totally fine, look. See? Okay, one pipe cleaner makes two arms on this sock gnome size, okay? If you make a bigger gnome, then you might need more than one, but really all you need is this. And like this, this piece is kind of hanging out already, so roll it over. So now I've glued it twice. Then you see the pipe cleaner's in there. Roll it over once. Get that glue dried up in there. And then we're going to glue again. Make sure I got some glue here. Hold the edges and we're gonna roll it over again. Kind of just tucking that fabric into place, okay? So, see there, this is what I've got with my pipe cleaner in there, all right? Now, cut off our fabric. Try not to cut the um, pipe cleaner, you know, try to cut it as straight as possible, okay? But now, you see, I just have this raw back edge, which is totally fine. That's how we're gonna do it. Um, fold it in half, cut it in half at the, at the fold. And now I have two little arms and you see the little black tip sticking out. So um, we're just gonna shove that part right up in the side here of our little Nomi. I'm gonna name it that. And I'm just gonna put a little glue right there like at that sideburn part piece, right? I'm gonna tuck it in, put a little glue on the top so it stays down. And then I'm just gonna start shaping my little pipe cleaner and what I do here is I take a little dab of glue on the edge, take that little tan pom-pom push it into place and then, you know, kind of maneuver, maneuver the glue. And you gotta get like all your glue strings out of here. All right, so same thing. The raw edge goes down on the good, or down on the bad side, right? Gonna do the same thing right at the sideburn part. Shoot some glue up in there. Put the pipe cleaner folded fabric piece in there. And then a little bit of glue on top where the felt touches the fabric of the arm. Start bending it into place, kind of. Pinch this little thing together. Where's my other little, there it is. Okay. My little hand. All right, so. We're, 
almost done, guys. I know you're hanging with me. You're hanging with me. All right, so look, you got two little know me hands right there, right? Okay, what I do when I have arms on my gnome is I like them to hold something. Now, I found at the Dollar General of all places, I did a little craft earlier today for YouTube, and I'm, I had this little bag of little eggies. Um, I think it was two bucks for the bag. You could also go to Dollar Tree and get these carrots, okay? And you could have your little guy, look, look at this, how cute. He can hold the carrot, or I had one laid out. He can hold an egg, okay? Now, I had the pink originally laid out, but it, it kind of hides into the beard. So let's do the carrot, okay? I think the carrot is super cute. And I, this is how I like to bring the arms together. So I do a little dab of glue on this side of the hand, put my carrot there and push into like one another, right? So it's like secure. And then I will attach the other hand to the carrot. So hold on, he's leaning here. And I wanna put it just slightly lower so it's just kinda of like he's holding it, you know? Like, hey, here's my carrot. <laughs> that is so cute. Thank you, Patty. I know, I, I love making these little guys. They're fun and I like having them for every season and I always make one, like and I think I'm gonna end up keeping it and then I end up giving it away. <laughs> um, but they're so cute, right? So I get like a different one every season almost. But look, he's got his little carrot. Okay, we're almost done. Remember I told you like I put something up here to kind of hold this little felt, little like the fact that it's, you know, kind of a raw little tip there. You can leave it, you can get one of the, um, I don't know if you guys have this in your craft stash, these little pom-pom things, these little make pom-pom makers, which I can't get this one open, but you wrap the wine, or wine, you wrap the yarn and then you um, cut it and you turn it into a pom-pom if you don't have pom-poms. Or if you don't wanna make the pom-poms, I believe Hobby Lobby, your craft stores, they sell like bags of pom-poms. They sell like the poofy kind that's like fuzzy or they sell them like this, right? Already pre-made with the yarn. And so I have a couple of these like in my stash already. Now, I, I'm just gonna use one, maybe the purple one, just to finish this off on the hat just cause I feel like it needs that something on there, okay? So I'm just gonna do that. Um, with one of the, oh, I just burnt myself, um, with one of these pre-made ones, okay? But you can totally make one, you can put a butt in, you can put a bow, whatever. Now, I talked about earlier either taking it and tipping it down, you could totally do that. But because this is our Easter guy, let's go ahead and put him on his feet. We're gonna add, remember, we're gonna add the uh, little ears, okay? So we're gonna start first by putting his body together to his feet, his boots. And I'm just gonna pile on the glue here to the boots. Try and catch it where it didn't fall off the side there. And I'm just gonna hold this down and secure him as best as I can. I'm gonna try and, oh, I got him a little twisted when I get him straight. As best as I can like that, and you can kind of like almost slip the sock down a little to kind of help his little booty there, right? Um, let me just kind of hold it here with my stomach and get some extra glue going, okay? I'm gonna hold it because I wanna make sure he stays in, in place. It's kind of, he's a little wider than these boots, so, um, just gotta kind of be aware of that, okay? Now, you can add like pants or something to it to kind of cover this, because look, you kind of see like, that kind of does look weird. It's like his butt meets the top of his boots. Um, some people don't like that look, some people do. It's totally up to you. From the front though, you see, it doesn't matter. He's super cute this way. And you're gonna see only the front anyway. So, 
Um, it's up to you if you want to put like some kind of shorts looking thing. That's kind of hard, um, but I've seen people do it. So I'm just throwing that out there. The last part is the uh, ears. So I'm cutting off the unicorn. Um, I totally think the unicorn is cute. What do you guys think? I don't know. I'm not digging the unicorn for him. I think it's a him. It might be girl. If it was a girl, we'd give her braids, but I don't think the unicorn. What do you think? The unicorn? This is so cute. Thank you, Patty. April, this is adorable. Thank you. Unicorn? Put it in the comments. Let me know. I think, I think the unicorn just takes away from it. I'm going to cut it off. Don't hate me. <laughs> uh, let me use my little scissors here. So it's just a gold little fabric stuffed little unicorny shape. So I'm just going to cut into it like that and try to cut it off. Got to be careful because I don't want to cut the ears. Um, but here's the thing. I could probably do some sort of other unicorn craft for my daughter and use this or something. I just got an idea. Okay. Oh, you said no, don't cut it off the shelf. Okay. No. Oh, no unicorn. Okay, good. All right. So white fluffy yarn pom-pom okay if i had like a snowball or something like that from like christmas time i'd totally make a cottontail puff butt right here on this i don't think i have anything i'm looking in my stash behind the camera and i don't think i have anything that's like a fluffy puffy ball i have these little ones but that's not enough for like a bunny butt do you guys know what i'm talking about like i need a true bunny little cottontail so i will have to add that i don't have that but let's go ahead and put the unicorn on or the ears on and I want to put it slightly higher and I'm noticing here it's got a little bow and these ribbons I'm gonna trim the ribbon so it's not like hanging too far down into the eyes of this rabbit or this this gnome okay all right so I'm just gonna glob it up in the back here put this on it's got this cute little nose for the top. So, holding it into place. You guys, it's so cute. Cotton ball. All right. Here we go. And these little ears kind of, sh oh my goodness, this guy is so stinking cute. I love him. I don't think I'm going to have, I don't think I can give it away. <laughs> I might. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Let me fix his arms a little bit. I feel like his carrot needed to be up a little bit. Okay, what do you guys think at my little gnome? He's so stinking cute, right? Look at that. He's got his little ears. There's his nose. If you don't know, like I got two noses going on here. We might need to get rid of that one, <laughs> right? I think we might need to get rid of that one. But how adorable is this? Now, earlier, let me show you. I'm definitely gonna take a picture of it because I'll put this live up on YouTube as well, because I have the other videos that I made earlier going up today on, uh, or tonight, maybe tomorrow, I don't know, on YouTube, and um, I have to still make this guy. Um, so I have like a whole little vignette that I've created, created at the front door um, on this table, like this, you know, like when you walk in, what's it, the table you like for your keys or whatever, I have one at the front door that I style it. And it's not really functional, it's really for looks, and I change it up for the seasons. And I create like a little vignette there. I posted like different pictures of it, especially at Christmas time, it was my favorite. It's on Instagram if you wanna see the table I'm talking about. I've just kind of done it up a little bit for Easter. Um, so I created videos earlier, a little craft, and this was using Dollar Tree stuff. I know you guys can kind of see it in the video here. Look at my little carrot and egg stand. <laughs> I made this with like the little crate and some sticks and I just kind of stained it with the chalk paint. The, the video for this is coming up on YouTube. Okay, so if you wanna see how to make this, it's going to be on CraftyLifeMom.com's YouTube. 
um, in just a little bit when I get off here. But so look how cute these little guys are standing next to each other. With that, he's got a carrot in his hand that's like in the carrots from here. How stinking cute is that? What? Do you guys like it? What do you think? Let me see. Patty says, so cute. Thanks, Michelle. Love it, Janine. Thank you. Yeah, I do too. I think it's super adorable. All right. So that's what I have live for you guys tonight. Um, I might come back Wednesday. Let's see. They do go together so well, April. I totally agree. They're so cute. And I have got to say, I honestly did not have that plan that it would matchy match. Um, these were just some things that I wanted to put together and make. And as I was making the earlier videos today, um, I was like, oh my gosh, my gnome is going to have to hold an egg or a carrot. So, yes, they are super cute. Here, let me put them in the camera so you can see. Doo -doo -doo. Look at that. <gasps> Yay, so cute. And this one, like, ended up being, shoot, like, over a foot tall. So, I mean, he could kind of, like, get this little action going here, you know, where you get that little bend. And it's super adorable. He's all ready for Easter, the Easter bunny. Um... I'm still not sure about this little, like I almost feel like I should have lowered that and made that part of it. But either way, I still like him. He's super adorable. So there you go. That's what I have. I may come back Wednesday, guys. If not, I'm going to shoot again for next Monday. So look for me there. And if you want more tutorials and DIYs, check out my YouTube. I have a ton over there as well. All right. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and hanging out with me. Happy crafting. Okay. Bye.